Hello. We frequently get questions about Flink's fault tolerance guarantees, and specifically about end-to-end -end exactly once delivery guarantees. In this video, I would like to go into some details about this um, aspect that will hopefully uh, give you a better understanding of how it works in Flink. I'm going to assume that you have a um, general understanding of Flink's fault tolerance model and how checkpointing mechanism works. But uh, if you'll need a refresher on that, I'm going to put a link uh, to an overview into the description to this video. This topic of exactly once uh, guarantees can be a little bit uh, hard to grasp if you're just trying to derive your knowledge from the documentation. And um, the reason for this, in my opinion, is that um, it is used in two different contexts. The first context is related to how Flink state is affected by failures. And um, the second context is how failures of Flink nodes affect external systems. Let's look at them one by one. If we're talking about exactly once in the context of Flink, it is related to the question, if a worker goes down, how is Flink's state affected? And the answer is, it depends on your settings. Flink supports different levels of guarantee for failure recovery. The first one is deactivated checkpoints. It means that you have at most once delivery guarantee. All state is lost in case of a failure. The second one is at least once. Uh, in this case, each event affects the managed state of a program at least once. In case of a failure, the sources will be rewound, uh, but it could be internally that records are considered twice in the calculations. And um, the last mode is exactly once. Uh, this is the most consistent one. Uh, this means that each event affects the managed state exactly once. Um, but note, however, that it does not mean that events are processed exactly once. Still, if a failure happens, the sources will be rewound and the messages will be replayed. It's just the effect of their processing will be consistent with the state. You might be wondering why uh, would it ever make sense to use uh, at least once uh, delivery guarantee. And uh, the answer is, for example, if your sources do not support exactly once. Uh, one such example is um, Google pops up um, source, uh, which is a replayable source, but it is um, non-deterministic in the sense that all messages will be delivered. However, which worker will get the replayed messages upon recovery is not uh, guaranteed. And uh, in this case, it doesn't make sense to use the stricter default exactly once mode of operation, and it is recommended to switch to at least once. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but what it does under the hood is it uh, disables the so-called uh, barrier alignment uh, phase uh, of uh, checkpointing uh, mechanism. Um, normally, in exactly once mode, uh, if um, an operator has multiple inputs, uh, Flink waits to receive checkpoint barrier with the same ID on all of its inputs before uh, creating a snapshot. Um, this uh, makes sure that the snapshot is always um, impacted by a consistent uh, subset of uh, the incoming stream. And um, at least once mode disables uh, the barrier alignment phase. It makes the checkpointing mechanism more um, lightweight. Um, and um, again, if you anyhow don't uh, get any um, exactly once guarantees already, uh, it makes sense to, to skip it. Um, another example is if your jobs do not need exactly once. Uh, for, instances, for instance, if all of your uh, state operations are important, maybe you're just putting some uh, keys into Flink state and it doesn't matter if you uh, replay the messages again. Next, let's talk about the context of external systems. And here we talk about exactly once end to end. And the question is, if a worker goes down, how are downstream systems affected? As a reminder, when we talk about exactly once in the context of Flink state, it means that results are correct, but they still 
may be produced more than once. When we talk about exactly once end-to-end, -end, it means that results are correct and they are produced only once. Exactly once and at least once guarantees require replayable sources. The data will be replayed in case of a failure. End-to-end -end exactly once, in addition to that, requires transactional syncs. Or you may be satisfied with id important rights, but it is kind of cheating. So we're not going to look into that in this video. Mechanics of um, exactly once end-to-end -end is a frequent source of uh, confusion. So let us look into the individual steps. Um, first, we need to answer which state do we have. And um, at any moment in time, our job is running, we have the following state, all of which needs to be included in a snapshot. So we have uh, read some data and um, corresponding to this data, we have these um, offsets in our sources. Our task operator instances um, have created some processing state, including timers. And um, also here you can see that uh, we have some data that is about to be published to external systems. Now, it is strictly speaking not exactly Flink, uh, Flink state, but we still need to consider it because this is the core of this exactly once uh, processing guarantee. Now, Flink's transactional syncs uh, provide exactly once end-to-end -end processing guarantees. And this is based on a two-phase commit protocol implemented by this two-phase commit sync function. Um, as you know, checkpointing is orchestrated by checkpoint coordinator and Flink's job manager performs this role. It um, injects checkpoint barriers which uh, flow along the execution graph and when a checkpoint barrier uh, passes the sources or the passes the sources and Flink operators, it uh, triggers them to copy state to a fault tolerant distributed uh, file system and report back the results. Um, notice what happens next when the checkpoint barrier passes our transactional syncs. Each parallel instance opens a transaction and writes its records to the output. And notice also that it acquired transaction IDs from the downstream system. Those transaction IDs are also stored as part of the current checkpoint. When all parallel instances of the sync have finished those operations, the checkpoint is actually considered complete from Flink's perspective. So we have our offsets, we have our application state, and we have those transaction IDs in the checkpoint. When all instances have reported successfully storing transaction IDs, the so-called pre-commit stage of the two-phase commit protocol is considered to be uh, complete. Um, notice that the transactions are actually still pending. And one important aspect is that according to the contract of uh, the two-phase commit uh, protocol, once transactions are pre-committed, all participants are obliged to be able to commit them. If at this stage one of the sinks uh, would fail, Flink would recover it uh, to the latest checkpoint, including those transaction IDs. And uh, the recovered sinks, if necessary, will try to commit all pending transactions. And this is actually why it is important uh, to set, um, to make sure that Kafka's uh, parameter called transaction max timeout is large enough to outlive any potential flink downtime. The default is 15 minutes. If uh, you didn't manage to recover your job within this time frame and you're using exactly once um, end to end semantic, um, Kafka will uh, purge the transactions. And so flink would not be able to um, 
complete uh, the end-to-end -end delivery phase. And uh, in the normal case, when the checkpoint coordinator has collected confirmations from all of the parallel um, sync instances, it will broadcast a reply message triggering them to proceed with committing all open transactions. Um, so this way, regardless of failures, the output is observed in the downstream transaction system um, only once. Um, you will need to make sure um, to set your consumers to the uh, read committed isolation level. Otherwise, they will still see those uh, pre-committed results in the input, which might not be uh, consistent. And um, this is how it works end to end. Um, there are some aspects that come into play here, like for instance, um, if you have a very low latency uh, focused um, use case, um, you will a very low latency focused use case where you require end to end uh, delivery guarantee. It might be a bit tricky because um, as you've just seen, um, the final commit happens upon arrival of the checkpoint barriers. So it means that if you have very low latency requirements, you might need to be uh, very um, aggressive with your checkpointing. So you have, you have to uh, set checkpointing interval uh, very low and it uh, might or might not be uh, feasible depending on the load and the um, kind of the application uh, that uh, you are implementing. To summarize what we've learned, let's consider a simple example of a word count application. The words come in and we count how often they occur in the stream. If we have checkpointing disabled, some words might not be counted correctly, or they might not even occur in the final results. If we have checkpointing with um, in at least once mode, and we have replayable sources, then no words are going to be lost. Uh, but some words may be counted more than once. If we have checkpointing in exactly once mode, plus we have replayable sources, but we don't have transactional syncs, we will always have correct results, but those results might be repeated after recovery and might be observed multiple times. If we have checkpointing in exactly once mode with replayable sources and we're using transactional syncs, the results are going to be correct and they're going to be emitted only once, even in the face of failures. I hope you found this video useful and um, it helped you better understand how Flink's checkpointing mechanism allows it to achieve exactly once end-to-end uh, -end processing and delivery guarantees. Um, if you want to get notified about our new material, subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching.